On a previous part, when we set up the application solution, we did create three projects. One of these projects was the client app, which we created using the ASP.NET MVC. Before we create our first controller, model and view, let us go to Visual Studio and have a look at the default files of an ASP.NET MVC project. In here, you need to go to the Solution Explorer. And if you do not see the option here on the right, you can just go to View and then Solution Explorer. The MVC app in here is the shortly.client. And the first thing that you see within this project is the connected services. If you want to manage connected services, you can just right click in here and go to Manage Connected Services. Or if you want to add a new one, you can just click to add. And these are all of these services that you can add to your project. If you go to manage connected services, you'll get in here two sections. The first one for Azure service dependencies. And these are all these services that you can add. Or you can add a reference to other services like OpenAPI, gRPC, or a WCF web service. Next, in here, we have the dependencies section. And inside dependencies, we have analyzers, which is a set of tools that analyze your code to enforce coding standards, find potential issues and bugs. And we also have the frameworks subsection, which does contain references to the .NET frameworks or other frameworks that your application depends on. In here, we also have properties and inside properties, we have the launch settings.json file, which is used to configure how the application is launched for debugging. An important section within this one is the profiles. And you can see that inside the profiles, you have the HTTP and HTTPS. So what you can do in here is that you can optionally create other sections, define the properties for these sections. Like for example, in here I can just create an every section or it makes more sense to have a development one. And once you save the changes and you define in here a couple of options, you can run your app using these options by just changing the profile here at the drop down. You can see that I have the development profile that I just created. Then after the launch settings, we have the root folder. And you can see that in here, you can put the CSS files in the CSS folder, JavaScript files in JS and other libraries in the lib folder. And in here, you can also see that you have the fab icon file. And this icon is the one that appears on the browser tab for your website. Now, as the name already indicates in the controllers, you have the application controllers and by default, we have the home controller. In the models, we have the C sharp files that define the data models. And by default, you just have the air view model, which is a model that represents air information. Like for example, the request ID and also show request ID. Next, we have the views folder and inside the views, you are going to see that we have multiple folders, the home folder, the shared folder and view imports and view start files. The home folder is used for the actions within the home controller. So if you would create in here a test controller, then you would have in the views a test folder. And then for each method or each action within that controller, you would have a separate file. So for example, in the home controller, I have the index and also the privacy actions, which do return views. What this means is that inside views, I'm going to have a folder name with the same as the controller name, so home, and then two files with the action name. So we have index and also privacy. In the shared folder, we have three files. The layout.c-sharp HTML is the shared layout page for the application. And if I open this file, in here you are going to see that we have the header, which is going to be used by all the pages. We have the footer. And then down here, we also load some scripts. What's important in here is this render body method. And this is the place or this method does define where all the components are going to be 
render. So for example, if I navigate to home index, then I'm going to have the same header and the same footer. But inside this main tag, I'm going to have the index.c sharp HTML. And then if I navigate to privacy, then the render body is going to render the privacy.c sharp HTML file. The other file, which is the validation scripts partial.c sharp HTML, is a partial view for validation scripts. The error.c sharp HTML, as the name already indicates, is a view to display the error messages. The view imports is used to set up the common directives that are imported into the other view files. So for example, if I want to use a certain folder that has some classes, or basically if I want to use a certain namespace, I can just define the namespace in here one time, and then I can use that namespace in all the views in this app. And the last view file in here is the view start.c sharp HTML, which does contain code that runs before the view files are rendered. And this is typically used to set the layout file. So in this case, we have said that the layout file for our app is going to be the underscore layout.c sharp HTML. Then next we have the app settings.json file. And this file is also known as the configuration file because in this JSON file, we do typically put configuration data like database connection strings and application settings. The last file, but actually the most important one because it's the main entry point for the application, which sets up the web host and also starts the app is the program.cs. We are going to use this file to configure our services. We are going to use it to also configure the database connection. So this is all you need to know about the project structure and this is enough theory on the upcoming parts we are going to learn by writing some code. So see you on the next ones.